So for the last couple of you that logged on, again, welcome. So I have my little, so I'm getting over a cold. So normally I bring like one of our fancier drinks, but there was no way I was downing straight alcohol, but I did a spritzer. You can see this pretty blue purple color. Um, in fact, let me get my flashlight out because it's kind of hard to see in the corner, but look how beautiful that is. Um, so this is made with butterfly pea flower, which is one of the ingredients we'll be talking about tonight. And you can see it's mostly blue on the top and then it gets more purple down towards the bottom. Um, and this is just a spritzer with a light uh, white wine, whatever you prefer, and lemon juice, a little bit of butterfly pea flower tea is what gives it the color. So that's a really fun ingredient that hopefully you'll all be taking away from this. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get started with the presentation. All right, so our topic tonight is the cocktail garden. So this class is really fun. Um, I, one of the things that I like the most about this class and also we offer an intro to canning class is because this is all stuff that you have in your garden or that you want to have in your garden or maybe that you buy at a farmer's market or you want to grow and ways to incorporate that not just into food but into drinks as well and there will be some great recipes and great information on all of that. And we'll skip, that's just an about page. We used to be Tulsa Vegetable Gardener, but now we service people all across the country and in Canada. And I am pleased to say this year with our classes, we're helping people garden worldwide, which has been really, really exciting. Um, so we're here to help you with all of your gardening needs. If you have questions about growing any of the stuff we talk about, we've got other classes that you can also access online. So if you go to our Facebook or our YouTube page, you can find them there. And we have some specific to herb gardening, um, overall general gardening classes. So we hope we see you in other classes or that you have interest in that. But tonight we're gonna open with cocktail herbs. So herbs I like to start with because herbs are one of the easiest, most accessible things for all of us to grow. It's something that whether you have a huge 10 acre garden or you have a tiny backyard patio or even just a little grow light inside, you can grow your own herbs. And it's a great addition to the kitchen and also a great addition to your cocktails. So we're gonna go through each one of these tonight and get some ideas for these guys. So the first cocktail ingredient we're talking about tonight is one of my favorites, and that is mint. Mint is so easy to grow that sometimes if you grow it well, you want to get rid of it because it tends to take over your garden. This makes it a great container plant. There's over 30 different varieties of mint. And if you ever have the opportunity to actually taste the mint you're buying to maybe clip a tiny leaf off it at the garden center, um, and really smell it, put it on your tongue, taste it. They're all very different and you can get different flavor profiles, which is excellent for making cocktails. Mint likes dappled sunlight and partial shade. So this is a great one if you don't have a full sun garden to put in a container, very, very pretty plant. It spreads like mad. Uh, this picture here in front, we actually use it as a ground cover on one side of our home. We have a, on the side of our porch, just this kind of empty space, it's kind of part shade. And so we put our mint there. Um, the space also serves as a portion of our pollinator garden that we have in the front of our yard. Pollinators love mint. If you really don't want your mint to spread, you can apply mulch around it to prevent it from spreading all over the place. And ideally for the best flavor, you want to harvest your mint leaves before the plant flowers. However, the flowers are very pretty and make an excellent garnish. So mint is one of those really cool things to grow because it is really pollinator friendly. Once it does bloom, you'll get pollinators like crazy visiting your garden. It has a great distinct taste and it's very, very useful. And our recipe for mint is our classic mojito. And I, I try to get some creative recipes in this presentation, but I love a good mojito. And especially if you get mojito mint or a mint that you really, really fancy, it's excellent. And it also makes a good non-alcoholic drink. So if you have other people who do not wanna consume alcohol or kids, this makes an excellent mint drink that they can enjoy too, just without the rum. So mojitos are one of my summertime favorites. Definitely right now in Tulsa, I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're in gardening zone 7B. Mint is right at its peak. Um, so this is definitely mojito season for us. So other things that you can use your mint for, it's paired traditionally with lamb. If you like lamb, mint sauces or mint jellies are traditionally served with lamb. Also, of course, chocolate desserts, right? We see mint paired with chocolate often. 
Also pea and mint salads. Mint really can be more versatile, I think, than most people think. It's excellent in lentil salads, in chopped up pea and mint and radish salads, because they're all coming together kind of end of spring. Also excellent in flavored waters and teas, or just tea, right? If we are making mint tea, excellent for the digestive system, um, excellent flavor. And again, you can really have that profile come out. An interesting fact about our mint here, it's commonly used in aromatherapy and it has been clinically linked to stress reduction. Um, so if the mojito wasn't enough for you, you can also get stress reduction from just smelling and um, ingesting the mint plant, which is kind of, kind of a good benefit of mint. So next up for our cocktail herbs is thyme. So thyme is one of my favorite perennials. So it is perennial. It'll come back year after year. Mint will as well. This one loves full sun. So if you have a sunny area where you can either plant it in the ground or put it in a container, thyme will be very happy there. You can also take cuttings from the plant and start new plants. So if you have a friend that has a thyme plant and you're wanting to get one, just get some cuttings and start them in some water. You can get a brand new plant from that. So you can kind of share your thyme plan. You want to trim these guys back to slow their growth. Um, I have some in my garden tower, both indoors. I have an aeroponic tower and outdoors, and they will take over. So you want to be sure that you're giving them a trim back every once in a while. And the older flavors here might lose the flavor quality that you're looking for in your food and drink. But the good news is then you can start a new plant from your old plant. So you can keep it having that nice, fresh, kind of almost lemony flavor to it. Our drink recipe for thyme, this is one of my favorite ones in this presentation. I love lemon too, and lemon is another ingredient that we'll talk about. Um, but this is lemon thyme cocktails with honey simple syrup. Because of the ingredients in this one, this is an excellent cocktail that you can serve even around the holidays because it has the essences of the thyme in there, or even in spring, because you have the honey in there and the light lemon flavor. So an excellent one to keep on hand and very, very easy to prepare and really makes the thyme shine. So thyme can also be used in omelets. It pairs excellent with eggs, roasted chicken, roasted meats in general, very good with thyme, commonly used in Thanksgiving stuffing, um, and also with tomato-based soups and sauces. Tomatoes and thyme really go hand in hand when you're roasting tomatoes. And our interesting fact here for thyme is that it originated in ancient Greece and people believed it made people more courageous. So they would sometimes weave it into crowns or put sprigs of thyme um, on their clothing somewhere. It's a very, very ancient herb, very, very well-known, lots of varieties. Next up, we have rosemary. Rosemary is another one of my favorite recipe, or favorite recipes, my favorite herbs. Rosemary is also a perennial, so you will get it coming back year after year, which is wonderful. And it's the seedlings tend to grow very slowly. This is one that is excellent to purchase at a garden center unless you're very patient. It's hard to get it to start from seed, and then you'll have this itsy bitsy plant for a long time before you really see any good growth on it. So again, a really good one to get at your local garden center. This one is a pretty woody plant. It's pretty darn hardy. Um, here in Oklahoma, it will really, for all winter, you'll get still some growth on it. So very hardy plant. This is another one, since it is hardy, you wanna prune it back to keep it looking nice, especially if you have it in a container, make sure you're pruning it to fit your container nicely. And be careful not to overwater it. Rosemary is one of the plants, and we'll have a couple in this presentation, that prefers an arid climate, which means it needs good drainage. So you want to be sure wherever your rosemary is, it's not getting bogged down and have kind of marshy soil around it. Certain varieties of this plant can also be up to four feet wide. So be sure that you're getting a variety that works for the space that you have. The recipe here is a rosemary bourbon cocktail. Um, this is an excellent one as well. My husband is more of the bourbon drinker. He likes this one, but this one is very good. You can use any darker alcohol with it, or again, just on its own as a virgin cocktail. Very, very good. The rosemary simple syrup in this recipe is excellent. You can really put it in any dessert. Very, very good. And rosemary can also be used with any roasted meat, right? Rosemary is excellent with meats. It also pairs well with potatoes. Very, very good with potatoes. It's kind of a natural pairing. 
very good in breads and biscuits. I like to add this in my bread maker to some of my breads, gives it a really nice flavor, maybe with a little bit of garlic, and pairs very well with lemon and butter in pasta. This one, um, we've been trying to, so we adopted our kiddos, and they, before they lived with us, when they were little with their bio family, ate pretty much exclusively fast food. So getting them to eat anything green was quite a challenge. So we started frying some of these herbs and just sprinkling them on pasta. And let me tell you, fried rosemary is so darn good. I have to now keep them from stealing it if I, if I make it off the counter um, and also very versatile in recipes. The interesting fact about rosemary here is it's been used for centuries as a natural disinfectant. If you get organic cleaners, sometimes you'll see rosemary listed on there. It's naturally antimicrobial. Um, it's a, a nice one if you have a neutral scented cleaner or dish soap that you can actually add into that container of dish soap um, and then it'll give it kind of the scent of rosemary. Next up is cilantro. So half of you hate this, half of you don't. Um, but if you're a cilantro lover, lots of things you can do with cilantro in cocktails. It is a full sun plant, definitely, but this is one, it's an annual, so you're just going to keep it for one year unless you live in a tropical climate, and part shade can keep it from flowering as quickly. If you've ever grown cilantro, once it starts to send off shoots for flowers, those shoots take up so much of the plant energy that you don't have much left from the leaves at that point. So if you're wanting really good quality cilantro, part shade might be helpful. It grows really well from direct sow seed. I also have sometimes where I planted it, it'll volunteer the next year. And these are another one. Keep trimming your plants back, trim those flowers off, and you kind of extend the life of your cilantro. This one is exceptionally easy to save seeds for the following year too, so then you get free cilantro the next year. And the drink recipe here is a cucumber cilantro margarita. So we all know cilantro pairs well with a lot of tropical South American cuisines, a lot of Mexican cuisines and Tex-Mex works very well in a margarita, um, especially if you like cucumber and cucumber is actually in this presentation as well, but makes for an excellent, excellent margarita um, and a very simple one as well, which I always like. Cilantro, of course, if you're looking to put it in food, can be used in tacos, always, always almost used in, in salsas, very good in salad dressings, um, and pairs well with lime in poultry and vegetable dishes and fish as well. So if you like seafood, cilantro paired with lime is a really good pairing. The interesting fact here is that cilantro was one of the first herbs to come from Europe to the United States, along with dandelion. So we think of this is being native to South America, I think, because that's the cuisine we're used to having it in, but it is actually from Europe. Um, and dandelions, of course, now grow more pro prolifically and are also edible. You can actually make cocktails out of dandelions as well, um, but really old herb, again, very, very valued herb too. All right, so next is chives. Little onions, right? These are in the Allium family. They have an oniony flavor. They're a hardy perennial. They will come back and come back and come back and can definitely spread. They have very pretty flowers. Depending on the variety of chive that you get, they can be either a purplish or a pinkish or white. Um, and it, it this one will grow almost anywhere. It likes at least six hours of sun, but it will still grow if you have more than part shade even. Lots of flavor profiles and varieties and definitely attracts pollinators. I love our chives because they're one of our first plants in the garden that attracts pollinators in the early spring. And here's a picture of a little bee on one of these guys here. Um, these are, chives are really, really versatile. This is another one, they just add that light onion flavor so they can be used in cream sauces, very, very good with potatoes, excellent mashed potatoes, commonly stir fried, also good in cheese spread or cheese dishes. And I love them, it's not on here, but I love them with eggs. Um, we have chickens in our backyard and so we use up a lot of our herbs um, for eggs, definitely. An interesting fact here is adding the blossoms to vinegars will add a pretty rose tone. It will also do the same thing for olive oils if you're interested in infusing some olive oil and it makes it this beautiful pink color. And then Sharon had asked, are the flowers edible from chives? The answer is yes, Sharon, they are. 
the flowers are not very tasty and they're kind of the base of them is very chewy. So these are one that is great if you want to put it and infuse it in a white vinegar because it adds that beautiful pink tone and a little bit of that onion flavor, but you're not eating it. Um, the petals, you could sprinkle a little bit for that kind of nice purple pink color, I suppose. Next up is dill, one of my other favorites. Dill is biennial. Biennial plants are really interesting. Parsley is as well. Um, it, that means it comes, it'll start this season, it'll come back next season, and next season it'll produce flowers and seeds for you. This one is often grown as an annual, especially in North America, just because of most of the climate of North America. But you can succession plant to get more use, meaning you can put seeds down every five days or a week in the spring so that you're getting a progression of more mature dill that you can use for longer. This one likes at least six hours of sun as well. It does tend to go to seed with heat. So another one that doesn't really like hot weather, so you want to get it in in the spring. And definitely this one, very, very easy to save the seeds. And dill is, we know a lot about what dill goes into, right? This can be used in salmon, in pickles or quick pickles, yogurt sauce. It's definitely used in a lot of Mediterranean cuisines. Um, my Half of my family is from Russia and they put dill in a lot of stuff there. So definitely popular in Russian cuisines. Dill is also really, really good with roasted carrots. And I think with, with beets too, if you like pickled beets, dill is excellent in that. Dill is also an ancient herb when we're looking at our interesting fact down here. It's mentioned in the Bible and it's also mentioned in ancient Egyptian writings. So it is that old and has been around for that long, which is very, very cool. The drink recipe here is a pickled Bloody Mary. So if you are a fan of pickles and you're a fan of Bloody Marys, these are fantastic. The nice thing too is you can adjust the level of pickle that you put in there of dill flavor. So if you just want a little, you can put a little in there or you can put in a lot. Very good Bloody Mary recipe though. Um, this one I found to be a little bit lighter. It's also spicy. So if you like a spicier Bloody Mary, this one's a really good bet. So next is lavender. Lavender is also a perennial that likes well-drained soil. So again, you wanna put it in a container that has lots of draining or somewhere in your yard that's not gonna be a, a marshy bog for part of the year. For lavender, if you are wanting good lavender flavor in flowers that you harvest, you wanna really go easy on the fertilizer or the compost. That's gonna concentrate the oils into the flowers once they bloom so that you'll actually get more of the lavender flavor. Leave plenty of space. This one is prone to some fungal infections as well. So again, if you have high humidity, you wanna be sure it has good airflow around the plant. And this cocktail here is lavender bee's knees. Um, this one is kind of a twist on the bee's knees cocktail, which has been around for a while. But the lavender simple syrup here is just magical. If you like the flavor of lavender, you can make lavender lemon pancakes. You can put it in breads and cakes. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And it can be used, it's commonly used to infuse honey to give it more of that flower herbal flavor and also scent. Very good in muffins and lemonade. Um, also really good in cakes. Our farmer's market here in town, I don't know if it, the booth is still there since COVID, um, but they made an incredible lavender pound cake that was just so magical. Very, very good in baked goods. Lavender is also a natural insect repellent and can deter some garden pests, which is a common kind of theme. If you get into herb gardening, you'll see that quite a bit. A lot of insects don't like herbs. We have planted herbs all along our back porch and also our front patio, and it really does help decrease insect activity. And lavender is a good one for that. So next is stevia. If you're not familiar with stevia, you might want to check it out because it could be something that you really start to enjoy. Stevia is a leafy plant. It does eventually flower. It likes afternoon shade in the climate I'm in here in Tulsa because it gets so hot. If you live, say, in Denver, Colorado, which is where I'm originally from, then it'll be perfectly happy being in full sun. So you want to make sure that your stevia just isn't getting overheated. Loves being grown in containers. And in this hot climate, I plan away from warm walls. It's that heat sensitive. So we wouldn't want to put it right up against our brick wall. So if you're someone who lives in Florida, you want to probably give it some afternoon shade. If you're someone who lives in North Dakota, you're probably okay to plant it where you would, wherever you would like to. 
This one can be perennial. You want to, if you live in a climate, probably at least a zone eight, then it can be perennial. You want to be sure that you water it during the winter because it will still need watering. And it can be used in tea or it can be ground up into a powder to be used in a whole slew of things in place of sugar. So the drink recipe here isn't so much a full drink recipe. This is for stevia extract, which I've done before. Very similar idea to vanilla extract, except you're using stevia. Stevia is exceptionally sweet, exceptionally sweet. You need far less volume of stevia and even far less stevia extract in a recipe than you would sugar. But if you're wanting to cut sugar out of your cocktails, stevia extract is a must. This is a syrup that you can easily add into your cocktails. Um, it's excellent and it'll be a good natural sweetener for you. This is also commonly used in tea. When I brew black tea in the summer, once our stevia gets going, I'll put stevia leaves in with it, naturally sweetens the tea with zero calories. Also very good in baked goods and smoothies. If you wanna sweeten up your smoothie, you can put a stevia leaf in there and then also good in juices too. So interesting fact here, this sweetener is 200 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. So you want to use it sparingly. If it calls for a tablespoon of sugar, you absolutely don't want to use a tablespoon of stevia. All right, so next is my butterfly pea flower, my pretty purple blue drink here. This is a flower, you actually use the flower. It's very easy to grow it from seed, but it needs to be scarified, which means if you get these seeds, they're fairly large. You just put a nail file along them or a little piece of sandpaper and scrub at the edges a little bit to help that little germ of the seed pop out. These are another one that likes good drainage, great container plant. These want to be trellis, so they will climb. They're great to put along a chain link fence. They'll even climb brick sometimes, so they really like climbing. They'll tolerate partial shade and they don't require even good soil. They'll grow in pretty crummy soil. And the drink recipe here is the Galaxy Moscow Mule. Very, very cool. Um, you just brew the tea and essentially pour the tea on top of the drink to give it this kind of variation between pink and blue. Very, very fun with lemonade too. If you have lemonade and you have kids, you can put this blue tea on the top and it'll be blue and then green and then yellow. Very, very striking and also very unique. These are also flowers that you can buy ready to brew for tea. So if it's something you don't can't find or don't want to grow, excellent one to keep on hand. Definitely big for the wow factor. This can also be used in obviously tea, right? Um, icings, it's used in infused water, often used in lemonade. This is used in parts of Asia as well, instead of water for rice. So you get this brilliant blue purple rice. Definitely very striking on the table if you're an entertainer. Interesting fact here is that butterfly bee flower has been used historically in Ayurvedic medicine and has many known health benefits. I don't think it's on the list yet, but I know for a number of years, it's been a candidate to be a superfood. So I think one that will become more and more common as time goes on. All right, so that's our first portion, which is our herb portion. If you have any questions on that, please let me know. But next we're moving into cocktail fruits. Now I understand that cocktail fruits can be a huge wide range, right? Um, for all intents and purposes here, we're gonna focus on Meyer lemon and Persian lime. And the reason I do that is because these are little trees that any one of you can grow on a patio or a balcony. Um, and these are ingredients that will be very, very fresh that make your, your, your drink really sing. Um, my little dwarf trees are about four feet tall. I keep them pruned back so they come inside with me in the winter. Of course, if you're in more of a southern climate, you can keep them outdoors. Um, but both excellent cocktail ingredients. So the dwarf varieties do very well in containers. Like I said, my guys go out in the summer. I bring them in in the winter. They also have to have good drainage as most fruit trees do, and they don't wanna dry out completely. These are tropicals, so they do like to have some moisture content in the soil, and they want at least part sun. You'll probably get a few more blossoms if they have full sun. It's best to grow these guys with a good container mix because that will give you not only really good drainage, but also good moisture retention too. 
and prune the dead wood off and shape it occasionally by trimming the new growth. Obviously, if you have one, you can just plant outside. You don't need to worry about pruning as much unless it's getting too large. But if you're bringing it inside, you don't want it to be huge and massive and really, really full and bushy to where you can no longer maneuver your pot in and out. So trimming it can definitely be beneficial. So drink recipe here combines them both. So this is called the bootleg cocktail. This is really fun. It has both juice from the lemons and the lime. Um, this one also has fresh mint in it. So going back to one of our other excellent cocktail ingredients, that fresh mint. This is a really easy one. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a fun one. Definitely a good summer drink. So these guys can also be used in tea, chicken dishes, asparagus, lemon bars, lime bars, you know, key lime pie, we're all really familiar with citrus, I think it's a really important ingredient for a lot of our food. Dwarf fruit trees are actually created, this is our interesting fact, by carefully grafting fruit tree stems onto different rootstock. So you just take the root system of a tree that does not get very large and you graft the shoot system, everything above ground onto that. And um, grafting is what makes a lot of our dwarf trees and also makes a lot of our even ornamental trees much hardier because you can use different rootstock. Very, very cool process if you're a plant nerd like me. So next up, cocktail berries. So strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries, which are, aside from raspberries, our blackberries and strawberries are just about in season here in Oklahoma. It's very, very exciting. So for strawberries, Strawberries are easy to grow. They're, they really are easy. They make for great container and raised bed plants. You want them to be planted about 18 inches apart and you'll get this little cup and think 18 inches, that's crazy. But they send runners out, they send little shoots out and root down. Um, strawberries don't necessarily come back year after year. They're sending out their baby plants, which will then come back the next year for you. These love full sun. They are considered a perennial because they will continually come in. Definitely use a good container or all purpose soil here and avoid heavy clay. They don't like clay soils very much. Um, and these can be netted to prevent birds from stealing the berries, also squirrels. We have that this time of year. Um, our golden berries or ground cherries as well, I'm putting netting over, but that'll help you keep your crop of berries doing well. And the, this is a really classic one and a really fun one, the strawberry daiquiri, right? This is just the quintessential summer recipe for a drink. And um, these are just so darn good, especially if you're lucky enough to live in a climate like I do now, where strawberries are basically in peak season, right in the middle of summer. Really, really refreshing, excellent, excellent recipe. These, of course, can also be used in about a million things. Who doesn't like a strawberry, right? So cakes, salads, savory salads with balsamic dressing, fruit bowls. Um, you can also infuse vodka or rum with it. So you can put the fruit in there, turn it over every other day, and it'll infuse your alcohol for you. The interesting fact for these guys, the average strawberry has over 200 seeds, and they are typically the first fruit that becomes ripened in the spring in most areas. Um, on the seed note too, these are very difficult to start from seed. Definitely one that you want to purchase plants. So next are raspberries and blackberries. The size of the mature bushes on these can vary widely, so pick one to fit your space. They also tend to travel and really branch out. We have an easement at the very back of our property, so right now we're trying to push our raspberries and blackberries to grow into the easement, because if the city ever has to come do work and hacks a bunch of them down, they'll just come back the next year and we'll have more berries. But if you want one that's more for a container, make sure you buy a container sized variety. These need full sun and well drained soil. Generally, unless you get a container variety, these guys need to be spaced two to three feet apart. And you want to water and fertilize them regularly. These are heavy producers in the summer. They will want some fertilizer. And you just prune these guys back in late winter by cutting off any of the peeling branches, anything that looks dead. Um, definitely cover your arms while pruning. These are spiky plants, so you want to protect your skin. And the drink recipe here is the raspberry gimlet, another classic cocktail. With It's just lime juice, simple syrup, gin, and raspberries. Excellent, refreshing, light cocktail, especially if you lighten up the simple syrup or omit the simple syrup and use some of your stevia syrups or your stevia extract. 
You want to just muddle the raspberries in here. So this is just an ultra fresh, easy recipe. And the black one is a blackberry bramble. This one is also a gin drink. You'll notice a lot of the fruits gin pairs very well with them. You can do blackberry liquor in here. Honestly, I just like either the fresh juice that I make and or muddling the, the berries directly in there. It has a much fresher, less kind of artificially sweet flavor. Now, of course, these guys can be used for a lot of things as well. They can be used in infused vinegar, um, pastries, excellent pastries, yogurt parfaits on cakes, also reductions for chicken and beef. So if you're wanting kind of more of a savory, great option to do a raspberry or blackberry sauce. The interesting fact here is the scientific study of black uh, blackberries is called batology, and a batologist is someone who has a keen interest and knowledge of them. Um, and for raspberries, they come in not only red, but gold and purple and also a whitish tone. And there was another variety, there was a black variety, there was another variety that I saw in Arkansas last year at one of the industry shows that I believe was like a very light pink, a new variety that was coming out. Very, very cool. So next up here are cocktail vegetables, which are near and dear to my heart, right? I'm, I grow all of this other stuff too, but my vegetable garden is kind of my pride and joy. So we're gonna go through a couple of uses for your cocktail vegetables. The first one here is your cucumber. Cucumbers are vining plants, so you wanna give them lots and lots of space. They can be trellis, they'll climb. Excellent container plant for that reason. You can just overturn a tomato cage in a grow bag or a big pot. Um, and your cucumber will naturally trellis up. They also come in many sizes, so select the best one for you. If you just have a tiny container and don't want to deal with trellising, there are some bush varieties, meaning that they don't send off shoots. They'll just stay nice and bushy for you. These guys, you definitely want to fertilize and water regularly. And the drink recipe here is so good. It's a cucumber lemonade vodka cocktail. This is another excellent one. It uses fresh mint and it also, can, you can emit the alcohol for just an incredibly refreshing drink, and it's very, very tasty. Cucumber can also be used in quick pickles, sandwiches and wrap salads, Greek nachos. It's excellent in diffused water. Um, cucumbers we use oftentimes with dips instead of chips, so to make it a little bit more tasty um, and healthy at the same time. The interesting fact for these guys so there can be a 20 degree difference be between the inside and outside of a cucumber, um, which is why when you hear the phrase cool as a cucumber, it's because if it's hot outside, the inside insulates very well and still stays very cool. Or if you put slices in your face or your eyes, why it has that nice cooling effect to it. Next up are tomatoes. So plants, tomato plants can get very large. In a couple of my classes, I have the world's largest tomato that fills this like 20 by 20 foot greenhouse and it's one plant. But now there's lots of patio varieties that have come out. I have one on my aeroponic tower that's one little bush about this big that gets lots of little tomatoes on it. So these are definitely a doable plant for really for anybody. You want to, do you want to get them a sturdy cage or support system, especially if you have a big plant? And they are heavy feeders. They use lots of nitrogen because they are leafy, leafy plants. So keep your soil healthy by keeping fertilization going. Mulch around your plants if they're in the garden to decrease disease and keep it more sanitary. And give the stems some breathing room. Tomatoes are one of the plants that's prone to disease. So if water is splashing up from the ground when you're watering them, they're likely to get a disease. So mulching around them and clearing the foliage from the stem will help a lot. The drink recipe here is an old one as well. It's called the waiting room. And apparently this was called something else back a long time ago. I tried to find more history on it, but most of the history I got from one of my friends who's a bartender. Um, this one is cherry tomatoes and basil with tequila. If you like Bloody Marys or you like margaritas on the less sweet side, this could very well be the drink for you. It's a very savory cocktail, but still very light. Excellent, excellent, and very interesting drink. And we all know tomatoes, right? They're used in ketchup. You can use them as, on a sheet pan as side dishes, in pasta, caprese salads, and sauces. Tomatoes are used in such a variety of dishes. The interesting fact here is the largest ever tomato was picked in Oklahoma in 1986 and weighed seven pounds and 12 ounces. 
Um, and if he was over here, my little Shih Tzu mixed dog weighs eight pounds. So is about as big as that tomato. All right, next up, jalapenos. Jalapeno plants are awesome. They will happily grow in containers. They do like some support from a stake or cage, even if you're just propping the leaves up along it a little bit, they like feeling like they're supported. They are red when they're ripe, but they can be pulled earlier to make the plant more prolific. You'll notice when you find jalapenos or green bell peppers in the store, sometimes they'll have a blush of color that's either red or yellow. It's not because they're underripe. People tend to think that it's because they're underripe. They're actually more mature, and those are the peppers that you want because they'll have better flavor. Jalapenos, when they actually ripen, are bright, bright fire engine red. Um, so very cool, but you can definitely pull them earlier because you'll get more peppers from the plant if you pull more off. This is why if you buy red or yellow bell peppers, they're more expensive because they take more time and more real estate on the plant. Withholding water can make the fruit spicier. So if you're a person that has good control over that, I always worry I'm gonna then forget about it and my plant will die. Um, but if you really want spicy jalapenos, you can wait until it's starting to wilt before you water it again and concentrate the capsaicin in the fruit. And the drink here, another one of my very favorites, just because I love, love, love Palomas, is a spicy Paloma. This is a grapefruit juice and tequila base. I love grapefruit juice too. So this one for me is I naturally gravitate towards it. Very, very good. A great patio drink, a great brunch drink, um, very light and refreshing. And of course, jalapenos can be used also to quick pickle if you want to pickle something. Excellent in slaws. Um, jalapeno poppers, stuffed chicken, lots of recipes out there, really good dish. Spicy fajitas, and of course, in lots and lots of different South American cuisines, as well as cuisines from around the world. Um, jalapenos are a variation of, of very similar peppers. Interesting fact here is jalapenos were the first pepper that traveled in space on a NASA shuttle. Um, it, it was actually the plant. They brought the jalapeno plant. It was one that traveled with them. I have yet to figure out why, by the way. I looked into it a little bit. I'm sure the answer's out there, but I'm not sure what they're, you know, what I, I always picture like 25 people in a, a conference room at NASA deciding that jalapeno was the one to go. I have no idea why. All right, everyone. So that is the last slide on the actual presentation portion today. Like I said, I will absolutely be posting these. If you have any questions now, you can ask about the cocktails, you're welcome to ask about any of the plants. And certainly if you're having any problems, general issues in your garden, that's my specialty. So feel free to raise your hand or type them in. I will be sending these slides out to everybody that signed up. So you will get a copy of all of those delicious recipes so that you can um, take them home, try them out, especially if there's usually one or two that really pick people's interest. And um, so you'll have those on hand. And then just look through the profiles a little bit of the plants. There's lots of other uses that we didn't have on here. Um, I think one of the reasons I gravitate to, so much towards this class is because we, it really was up until, you know, 100 years ago, maybe, that you ate what was coming out of the garden and you ate what was in season. And so people had to be very creative with dishes and we've lost some of that. Um, but this is a great opportunity when you're really drilling down into ingredients to do that again. All right, so does anyone have any questions before I sign us off? Oh, Ray said it was amazing. Can't wait for your other classes. Go, great, good. I'm so glad to hear it. I'm really, really glad you enjoyed it. Um, we do have a few upcoming classes. We have our second session of intro to canning. So if you wanna learn how to water bath can, um, that one is coming up and is a really, really great class. There's um, lots of container gardening classes that we've done already this year, planning your plants and talking about variety. So those are all up. And then our next series of classes that we're in the midst of now are called What the Expletive is Wrong with My Garden. And those are troubleshooting various issues in your garden. And Sharon said, I would like to see a YouTube channel of your videos and email you're sending us. Sharon, that is a phenomenal idea that nobody has ever brought to my attention before. Yes, I will absolutely do that. I will put a link onto our channel and a direct link to the class on YouTube so that you guys can link directly to it. Um, so with that, thank you all so much for being here. I hope you got some good ideas and enjoyed it. And I hope that I see you in another one of our classes sometime soon. Thanks everyone.